Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. So I gotta talk to you about what is love. This is a huge conversation and it's a very, very important conversation. Like, I, I truly believe that there isn't a more important conversation and that's a big statement. I do not believe that there is a more important conversation than this conversation, which is what is love? And I'm going to tell you why I believe this is such an important conversation. In fact, the most important conversation we can have as human beings. And that is because the way that our creator designed us is that our greatest and most powerful motivator is love. Our greatest and most powerful motivator, this is our fitrah, this is our design, is love. It is love, ironically, for the wrong things, that make nations go and bomb other nations. It is a love of power. It is love of wealth. It is love of domination. It is love that will make a person give up their life for another person. It is love that will make a person shoot another person because they want their sneakers. It is love of wealth or love of status. And so we all need to be talking about love <laughs> because love is extremely powerful. And if we love the wrong things in the wrong way, we can actually destroy the world. That is, that is a fact. And we are seeing the world getting destroyed because of that wrong love for the wrong things. We have entire governments, entire nations that have no problem killing women and children because they love to stay in power. And we're seeing that right now. So talking about love, this isn't a small topic. This isn't like a, you know, we're just sitting here talking about rom-coms. This is a very deeply important topic and we need to understand what love actually is and how loving in the wrong way can in fact not only destroy you but can destroy the world. So I'll, that's big, that's important. I want to begin by saying this, I'm going to narrow my topic to romantic love. All right, that's what I'm going to talk about. Now in the topic of romantic love, I'm going to say a few things. I'm going to list a few mistakes that we make or a few pitfalls that we fall into in, t in terms of this, under this topic of romantic love. The first one I'm going to begin with is what I believe is the most important. And that is this. It is a mistake that so many people make it is a mistake I made. It is a mistake I think the sister was saying she made. Many people make this mistake. And that is this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created love. And I'm going to put it this way. Allah created different kinds of love. Allah created, in, 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 for, for a more clear explanation to simplify, Allah created different compartments within our heart to contain love and different kinds of love. Now, Everything is fine as long as you keep the proper love in the proper compartment. There are different compartments within the heart and each compartment is created for a specific kind of love. And as long as you keep everything in its proper compartment, you'll be okay. But the moment that you put things in the wrong compartment within your heart, that is when the real damage happens. And you guys are probably wondering what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you an analogy before I explain what I'm talking about. Have y'all ever gone to a gas station before? Okay, excellent. And when you get to the gas station, imagine one day you get to the gas station and you, and you pull up and you realize that you just think that gas is too expensive that day. But you notice that there's a sign for orange juice. And orange juice happens to be on sale because it's, it's sunny delight. It's not real juice. And you say to yourself, you know what? I'm a little cheap and I'm going to just put orange juice in my gas tank because it's cheap. What's going to happen to your car when you put orange juice in the gas tank instead of gas? Because it's cheap. That you're going to destroy the car. Fair enough? You're going to destroy the car. Not only is it not going to run, but you've actually broken the car. So within the human heart, there is a compartment, just like a gas tank. And that compartment, just like a gas tank, is only made to hold a certain type of thing. A gas tank is only created to be able to handle gas filling it up but if you put orange juice in that gas tank you destroy the gas tank and you destroy the entire car now what does that have to do with the human heart see there's this part in the heart and i will call this the lub of the heart it is the very most central most inner part of the heart this isn't normal love 
No, this is the center of our existence. This is what I live for and what I will die for. This isn't just love, this is worship. It's the kind of love that becomes worship. But it's not worship in the sense that you're praying to this thing. People don't pray to money, but they worship money. And the reason why they do that is because their love of money is in this central part of their heart that was only created for the love of God. So you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying that within the human heart, there's an innermost part that's like a gas tank. It's only created for gas. In, this, in the case of the heart, it's only created for the love of God, Allah. This is, in other words, I'm gonna call this an ilah. Ilah. When you become Muslim, every single day when you pray, as a believer, you say this every single day. Many times a day you say, La ilaha illallah. What do, do we even know what we're saying? We, we don't actually know what we're saying. We're not only saying there's no God but Allah. Because then you think, okay, there's no creator but Allah. This is true. But essentially what we're saying is that there's nothing that goes in the core of the heart except for Allah. Except for God. Whatever language you want to say it, the creator, the ultimate, the almighty is the only one who goes in that central part of my heart and of my life. That's what la ilaha illallah is at a core level. And that is why a person will become destroyed, destroyed, destroyed if they put anything else in that core level. Just like the car becomes destroyed when you put orange juice in it, yeah? Just like a car becomes destroyed because you put orange juice in the gas tank, a human being, a society, a family, the entire world becomes destroyed if you put anything else in that core level other than God. What does that mean? It means if I put money there. It means if I put status there. It means if I put power there. It means even if I put another person there. Because what happens is, even another human being, and I'm talking now your spouse, yeah? Like your spouse, oh, you're supposed to love your spouse. But if you put your spouse, in that central most part of the heart that's saved for Allah, and I'll give you examples, you will actually be destroyed. And when I say you'll be destroyed, I mean that you will endure a lot of pain. Well, I just put it that way. You will endure a lot of pain and you actually cause a lot of pain. Because no one, Allah did not create the human heart to, to have the capacity to, to even contain anything else in that central part of your heart. It's like taking something other than Allah and making it an ilah. Believe me, an ilah is not just a, a stone idol. An ilah is not just a stone idol that you pray to. An ilah is essentially at its root, if you study the term, if you study the root of the word ilah, you see that it is anything that you put at the center of your existence. It becomes that which dictates every single thing you do or don't do. It dictates why you live, why you die. It dictates how you act and how you don't act. An ilah is a master. An ilah is a master. And the problem is, this is a lesson you'll always have to remember. Whatever you love most in life is your master. Simple as that. Whatever you love most in your life is your master. If that is money, then you are a slave to money. If that is your spouse, then you are a slave to your spouse. If it is your children, and now I'm talking about something that's just like blows your mind as a woman, especially as a mother and as a father. We definitely ain't taught this, that there's a wrong way to love our children. What? There is a wrong way to love your children. Why do you think we have so many problems with the whole mother-in-law issue? Do you want to know the reason? Anybody want to know the reason? This is the reason. It's because the dynamic to begin with from day one was unhealthy. I'm telling you guys something maybe we don't want to hear, but it's the truth. The dynamic was, was unhealthy from day one because that boy, that son of yours was never supposed to be in that part. That part is saved for Allah. Your life was never supposed to revolve around your children. I know, it's like, what? Your life was never meant to revolve around your children. It's unhealthy. And 
actually your life is supposed to revolve around Allah. This is something we're not taught. But it's unhealthy and it creates unhealthy, um, circum unhealthy consequences. And yes, that is why we have an issue then when the, when the son grows up and now he's getting married and all of a sudden there's a competition. There's not supposed to be a competition between a wife and a mom. That doesn't even make any sense. But the fact that there is, is only because the dynamic from day one was unhealthy and it was wrong. They taught you that you're supposed to revolve your life around your son, namely your son. They taught you that that's actually how to be a good mom. It's not how to be a good mom. It's unhealthy. Your life continues to revolve around Allah, whether you're married or unmarried, whether you're a mother or you're not a mother. And only when your central point in your life is Allah, your greatest and deepest devotion and love is for Allah, only then, only then, and mark my words, only then will you have healthy relationships with the creation. Only then can you have a healthy relationship in a marriage and, and with your children and with your friends and with your colleagues. Only, only if you're putting everything in the right compartment. I'm not up here to tell you that you're not supposed to love your children. For God's sakes, we love our children to death. I'm not here to tell you not supposed to love your spouse. I'm not even telling you not to love money. Love these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger made it halal. But what, do Allah, what does Allah warn us from? Allah warns us in the Quran. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ أَوْ أَبْنَاؤُكُمْ Allah in this ayah gives us a list of all halal things. All halal things. Say, if your fathers, meaning your parents, your sons, your children, and Allah lists eight, I think, halal things to love, and He says your parents, your children, your, your, your uh, spouse, your siblings, your wealth, your business where you fear decline. All, is any of this halal? Is any of this haram? Does the ayah say your boyfriend or your gambling or your drinking habits? No, all halal. But Allah warns us, if any one of these things, ahabba ilaykum min Allahi wa rasulah, is more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger, that's when you face a problem. Because even the halal, if it's loved in the wrong way, will cause much damage. And this damage will be to yourself and others. So the first thing I want to say is this. We have to put things in their proper place. When we say, La ilaha illallah. When we say there's no ilah except for Allah. What we are saying is that nothing else goes in the core of our hearts. And in the core of our lives. Nothing else do we revolve our existence around except for our creator. And that can't be our money, it can't be our, our business, it can't be even our children or our spouse. It can't be status, it can't be power, it can't be our career. It can't be these things. And I'm gonna tell you guys another secret. Remember how I told you about orange juice in the gas tank, right? Um, how do you know, how do you know that you're loving something in the wrong way? I'm gonna give you a very easy way to know. It's gonna hurt like heck. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel right because the car knows that you just put orange juice inside of the gas tank. The car feels it. It doesn't run right. It actually ain't going to run. It's not going to run at all. So the way that you and I will know that we have things in the wrong compartment is that we become tormented by that which we put at the center where only Allah should be. Is that making sense? If that is your business, you will not sleep because of your always your worry about your business. If it's your career, you won't be sleeping. You'll need to start taking pills to just calm yourself down. Because you put, and that's a sign, it's because you put it in the wrong compartment. If it's your children, same thing's gonna happen. They are going to torture you. I'm not talking the normal torture, yeah? I'm talking a different kind of level of torture, of torment. If it's your spouse, even your spouse, You'll know because there, you'll feel it. You'll feel that pain. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us we need to move things around. We need to put Allah back at the center. You know when I mentioned this whole thing about um, uh, us mothers when we raise our children and if we have that dynamic incorrectly, what happens when they get older is it's kind of like, well, I did tawaf around this boy my entire life and now you think you're going to come and take him away. Uh -uh. Right? 
Fair enough. <laughs> Y'all were, you weren't supposed to be doing tawaf around him ever. Like that, this, this, this concept that your life begins and ends at your son was never healthy. No, that's not what it means to be a good mom. What it means to be a good mother is you have Allah at the center and then you love your children and then you love your spouse and then you love everyone else but Allah is at the center. You don't put Allah aside. You don't put Salah aside because you got soccer practice. You feel me? Oh, but I have to take my kid to X, Y, Z, every kind of activity in the universe but I'm missing my Salah. That means my priorities are off. Or I gotta cook this so I'm missing salah. That's, that means that my priorities are off. And you're gonna find this. If someone that you love doesn't like your hijab, doesn't like it, doesn't look nice. Someone you wanna marry, right? Or someone that you're already married to doesn't like your hijab. Well, now it's a question, what's at the center, right? Because you're, you're being actually cho told to choose. We have to make sure, make sure that we have the right thing at the center. If it is not Allah and His Messenger, if it is not Allah and His Messenger, we suffer and then we make others suffer.